There we go. Hi, everyone. Let me just remove this little display here. Peace and blessings. Thank you all so much for turning, tuning in. My name is Crystal Foreman. I'm the owner and educator of Holistic Wellness and Health. Holistic Wellness and Health makes healthy living easy, nutritious, delicious, and fun with a focus on plant-based foods to help you live a healthier and more vibrant life. Today, we are um, doing something a little different. But for those who know me, I'm all about food, <laughs> um, growing food, harvesting and preserving and cooking as well. And so today we are going to, hi, Naja. Um, we are going to um, focus on vegetable container gardening, because my belief is that you can grow food anywhere. Um, doesn't matter if you have a studio apartment with no sunlight or if you're living in a basement apartment, like you can grow food um, someplace, um, especially if you have containers. So what I'm doing today is actually showing, sharing a um, presentation I did um, on May 14th with uh, Baltimore City Master Gardeners and Baltimore Green Space. So I'll be here live to answer any questions you have about container gardening, specifically vegetable container gardening. Um, I'm just gonna share the video of the presentation. I'm just kind of picking it easy today. This week has been rough mentally and physically. I've um, hurt myself, so I'm trying to recover because next week we have some exciting things going on with the Black Vegetarian Society of Maryland. Um, we actually have a plant-based Made Easy Challenge um, that starts this Saturday. You can register for free. It's a free program, 10-day program. And let me just share the link with, of that right now. Um, you can uh, also go to learn.holistic-wellnessandhealth.com um, or you can go to the, um, you're already on the page for um, Holistic Wellness and Health. So just go and look for the event and sign up there. So I look forward to having you all join that um, awesome free event. We'll be having um, cooking demos as well as a cooking class where you all get to cook alongside um, with, with me. So that's going to be a fun class. And then we'll do um, a couple of other workshops. We'll have prizes throughout the challenge. So you definitely want to make sure you show up live um, and share the um, videos and all of the information about the challenge with people, tag people and let them know that this exists um, because this is an awesome resource and um, something that we need to be doing to help build our immune system. So plant-based does not have to be difficult. It can be affordable. It can be easy, delicious, nutritious, fun, all of those good things. So we're going to do that together. Um, so we're going to go and get started. Today I'm focusing on gardening um, vegetable container gardening. I will be here live, but I'm going to show the video. So if you all have any questions, I can actually kind of look. This would be a little different than what I normally do. So I can actually look and see the comments and answer the questions. If you're watching the replay, please type hashtag replay and tag me in the comments so that I actually see that you left um, a comment or question and then I can answer you. So make sure you tag me and type in hashtag replay and that's going to get started. I'm not sure what y'all can see yet. So if y'all can see the video, please let me know. So I'm going to pause it for this right this second. If you can see the video playing, um, just let me know that you can actually see it. Hi, hi uh, is it Diamond? Hi, Diamond. Give me one second. Um, All right, let me go back to comments. Oh, this is getting frozen. I don't think you all can see that, but you all probably can hear it. Let me try that again. I'm still learning the system. One moment. So I'm actually sharing the presentation um, with you all. Just give me one moment. Thank you for letting me know, Naja. I appreciate that. So let me do full presentation. OK. 
kind of wanted to be in here with you all so y'all can see me. Um, share screen. Y'all get to see me learning all of this cool stuff. Okay. Application window. And there we go. So I think y'all can see now. Okay, everyone, I think I just saw that you all said you can see the screen, but you can't hear anything. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? You should hear the presentation. Ah. So you can hear me right now, but you could not hear the presentation. Okay, let me try that again. Um, I'm going to back it up and Naja, I might need your help. Hi, Cousin Rosita. Hi, Tashi. Hi, Naja. Thank you all for sticking in here with me while I figure all of this out because um, it's an awesome presentation. So I want to share it with you all and you all need to be able to hear what I'm actually saying. Um, give me one moment. All right. I'm going to share the screen again. So when the presentation runs, we can't hear it. Okay. Let's try to fix that. Naja, when you do presentations, they can hear when you go to your, you're sharing your screen, right? 
go to my phone so I can see the comments while I move things around. Thank you all for learning and bearing with me today. Okay, let's give this another try. I'm gonna share. Share sound too. Okay, I thought I did that, but let me make sure. I'm gonna start again. And um, if that doesn't work, then I might have to come back at six and then I'll just do the presentation completely live, <laughs> starting over again. Um, so it looks like the sounds are on, um, on the bottom. Cam, all right. All right, hopefully that will work. Now I'm gonna share the screen again. Application, yes, share. All right, can you all hear the presentation? Okay, so you all can see it. I'm just wondering if y'all can hear it. Give me one moment. All right, can you all see and hear the presentation? I think I've got it. There we go. All right, I'm going to stop that. I see what Naj is talking about. I'm going to start everything over again. And this should work this time. Thank you all for staying in here with me. screen. I've got it. All right. You all should be able to see and hear everything now. Just give me one moment. I'm going to share it again in one moment. Just want to do, make sure everything is good here. Okay. 
Okay, can you all hear me when I call right now? Can you hear me over? Ah. Okay, I believe you all can hear me right now. Um, I'm getting tips. So I did select Chrome. Did I for you all to see and share? Um, yes, we hear you. So you all can hear me now, but you could not hear the presentation or and or sound scrambled is what I'm hearing. I'm going to re-share the screen one more time. Give give me uh, one moment. Thank you all. Appreciate y'all. Um, okay, share. Share, Chrome, this one, share audio, click share. There we go. This should work. This should work. This should work. This is going to work. Yes, it is. There we go. Happy greetings, everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Um, I am Crystal Foreman. I am a Baltimore City Master Gardener, and I'm also the community liaison I'm on the board for the um, Baltimore City Master Gardeners. And um, there'll be a lot of information, a lot of information on the slides. So when I'm watching presentations, what I like to do is do screen, um, like a print screen, and then put it into another document. So there'll be some information that you might want to print screen, like resources. And just do a print screen of that and then save it to another doc. That's a little tip. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, Marcus, next slide, please. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so um, the Master Gardener program that Marcus said falls under the oh, screen is mostly me. That's the problem. Give me one moment. Master Gardeners is just one of the groups, and we are a volunteer group. We're trained by the faculty and staff um, to deliver horticultural and environmental educational outreach programs. Next slide. So um, the Grow and Eat It is an initiative um, by the University of Maryland Extension to encourage Marylanders to grow their own food. Um, so it's, there's a website there where you can learn more about growing your own food. And next slide. This is a quote about container vegetable gardening, which will be um, the main focus today, but we'll also talk about um, just container gardening in general, general, and most of the principles that apply to container vegetable gardening will apply to general um, container gardening as well. The next slide. Okay, so this presentation is for those who are just beginning to grow vegetables and in containers, but it's also appropriate for those who already have some experience who are looking to get more information and just ready to do more with their containers. Next slide. Okay, so um, in this session, we'll go over the advantages and disadvantages, um, including starting a container vegetable gardening, where to locate it and light sources. We'll talk about container selection, the types of soil to use and not use, um, vegetables and planting, um, we'll also talk about maintaining your container garden, like the type of water, nutrients, and common problems. There'll be some slides with resources, and then we'll save some time for questions and discussion. Next slide. So we're going to start off with just the advantages and disadvantages. So um, some of the advantages is that it's portable, which gives you better control over your sunlight, the water, and nutrients. And it's especially true if you have poor soil in your yard um, or you just don't have location um, to plant outside, you have the portable option. It's easier to protect your plants from extreme weather, pests, and critters. And you can start earlier in the spring and extend growing season into the fall. It's also accessible. You can, it can be fit pretty much in any location when you're doing container gardening and you can put it wherever it's most convenient for you. Um, it's also great for people who have um, physical limitations or um, it's great for kids as well. You can control where your containers are put, whether it's a higher location or lower location. You can also grow in vertical um, spaces to allow more growth area and it can expand your exterior walls as well. It is easy. Um, 
when it comes to gardening and growing your own food, container gardening is one of the easier methods. It's great for children, um, new people who are just wanting to learn how to garden. It's also great for people who want to continue gardening but downsize um, from a larger garden. Um, if you live in an apartment or you have a space where you can't dig, you have concrete, um, containers is a great way to continue to be able to um, provide some greenery and growth. So you can um, use containers on decks, your porch, windowsill, balcony, driveway, or your front stoop. It's also inexpensive. Um, you can reuse a lot of containers. Um, you can get containers from restaurants or um, just find or retain containers for reuse. So it's inexpensive. And it can get expensive depending on what type of containers that like you want to purchase, um, like earth boxes that are large or um, specialty containers. It can get expensive, but in general, it is an inexpensive activity. Some of the disadvantages include um, you need to water frequently. Growing in containers, um, usually the soil will dry out more frequently than if you're growing in ground. So um, one thing you can do is do a self-watering container and we'll have some information on that. So that's an option for the watering. And also there's the depth growing limits. So if you have a smaller container, you might not be able to grow certain things that grow very long like carrots or daikon radishes. Um, so you have to look at the growing limits as a disadvantage, but it can be overcome as well. Next slide. So getting started, four things to consider when starting the container vegetable garden is your location and light source, making sure you have the right container, the growing medium is important, and your vegetable selection and planting. Next slide. So um, you want to look at the location supporting the container. Some containers can get very heavy, so you want to look at your location for that. If you're growing on a balcony and you have neighbors um, below you, you want to be um, considerate about that as well and um, make sure that your drainage is not necessarily um, causing damage to someone else's property. And um, you want to make sure that wherever you locate it, it's convenient to water. So if you're planting a larger container that's kind of heavy, you want to make sure you don't have to move that too often. So you need to make sure you either have a water hose or you can take your watering can out to um, make it convenient to water those plants. And also you need to look at your light source. So there are some plants that can um, handle two hours um, of sunlight, direct sunlight, and they'll be fine. But most plants need between four and eight hours of sunlight. So we'll talk about that in a little more detail. Um, a 20 inch container filled with moist growing medium can weigh 100 pounds. So you definitely want to make sure you put your um, container like starting off somewhere where you don't need to move it as much unless you specifically using small containers. Um, that's easy, like I have some plants in small containers right now that I can bring in. Um, we had a few cold nights, so I was able to bring them in to help protect them from the cold and then um, put them right back outside so they can get the sunlight. Let's see. Oh, you also wanna be careful of microclimates um, and hot spots. So you can put a plant maybe on the south um, facing wall and if you have concrete or something around it, it might retain a lot of heat. So you want to look at your microclimates, um, wind and all of those types of um, things. So just pay attention to the surrounding of where you're going to put your containers. And um, you also want to um, look at stains. So if you put your container on concrete or wood decking, it might stain that area. So you want to make sure you consider um, protecting any areas you need to. Next slide. So um, I, we did get some questions ahead of time, so I was able to look at some of the questions. So I'm hoping I'm answering a lot of the questions um, in, th in the slides as we go along. I know we had a question about growing in a north-facing garden. So to maximize sun exposure, vegetable containers should have an east-west orientation. Ideally, um, containers should not be shaded by trees, hills, or buildings. And you wanna place your tallest crops, such as tomatoes, on the north side um, so that they do not shade out the other container um, plants. When you're growing food in a north-facing garden, um, there are some things you wanna consider. You wanna make sure you're 
picking the right produce. So cabbage and things in the brassica family, like broccoli, um, will do well as long as they get at least two hours of direct sunlight. Some root vegetables um, can also grow in a partially shaded north-facing location, such as potatoes, radishes, and carrots. Let's see. We can do the next slide. So um, you want to make sure you're picking the right container based on what you're growing. And there are lots of possibilities from using plastic containers and um, wood, wooden barrels to using straw, um, bale gardening as well. So the best food grade buckets are the HDPE. Um, you can find them at a lot of restaurants. Cat litter containers tend to be HDPE. They have the symbol number two. Um, you want to use something that is not going to leach harmful chemicals. So you want to make sure you find the right type of plastic. So HDPE number two is food grade. That's the best. You can also look for um, PP5 or po that's polypropylene. That's one of the um, better ones to use as well. You want to avoid plastics that are polystyrene. So anything that has the numbers three, six or seven, definitely do not use those. Um, if you're growing outside and it gets hot, those um, chemicals can actually leach into your soil and into your food. So make sure you're using the food grade, HDPE number two or polypropylene. Next slide. So basic requirements for your containers. Um, you wanna make sure that you have the um, drainage opening, and um, a place for overflow. You wanna make sure you're selecting light to medium colors and a non-porous, um, safe plastic or other non-metallic interior or liner. In this picture, you can see a bag is being used. So you can um, use like Ikea bags or different types. There's so many different options depending on what you're growing. Um, the simplest application of a drainage tray is to place a saucer under a pot. The excess water is whipped up into the media and pulled up by roots, and then um, that reaches the saucer. The number of commercial models available, um, there are so many of them, but you can also easily make your own. Um, dark colored containers will create higher temperatures that could injure young, injure, sorry, young tender roots and prevent the full development of a plant's root system. So you want to definitely look for lighter um, colored container. If you do have a dark container, you can cover it with um, a white cloth or something that's lighter, or you can even paint it on the outside to make it a little lighter. Um, out of the plants you would get from nurseries, they do use dark containers, so you can just switch that out. And you also, um, containers made from porous materials such as clay, Ceramic, concrete, and wood will dry out more quickly and they'll require a lot more watering um, than containers that use plastic. So you wanna think about that. Um, herbs such as lavender, thyme, oregano, marjoram, and chives do better in dry porous clay pots like terracotta. You can also do the self-watering containers um, and have an overflow hole on one side instead of the bottom. And the grow medium sits on a perforated platform directly above a water reservoir. So the plant roots grow through the medium and into the water. So that's something you can look at as well. And the University of Maryland does have a fact sheet um, that provides details on making a self-watering container. And I have some links at the end for um, specifically on how to do that because that can be a complete workshop in itself is making your own. So um, I'll have the resources for that at the end. Next slide, please. No, I'm not asking if you want to ask So we're going to examples of containers. So you have the container um, at the tabletop. You also have um, just like regular, you can use totes and put some, drill some holes in the bottom, whatever um, is working out best for you. One. There we go. So um, you can use containers that are temporary practical, um, artistic, expensive, or free. And um, commercially produced containers can be purchased at the garden container centers, or you could do it through mail order. Um, you can definitely recycle five gallon plastic buckets. You can use wooden crates. Um, you can use your 
old dresser drawers, um, trash bags even, um, wading pools. There are all types of storage containers you can use. And most people have something around their house that they can empty out and just throw some soil in and start growing. Um, you want to avoid treated lumber products and um, anything that might have harmful chemicals. You wanna make sure you're not using anything that has lead paint and just be aware of plastics that are not made for outdoor use. Oh, also hanging baskets. So if you do use a hanging basket, um, just be aware that they do dry out a lot more quickly than other um, forms of containers. So you might wanna make sure you have either a drip um, method of watering or using a self watering method. Next slide, please. So container soil, um, the soil you, you select is very important. And um, reason number one, so your soil supplies your nutrients, air and water to the plants. It also allows for maximum root growth. And the third reason is soil physically supports the plant. So roots grow in the spaces between individual particles of soil. Air and water travel through these spaces. Water carries nutrients needed to fuel plant growth and air is needed for root growth. So the air helps soil microorganisms that help supply nutrients to our plants. Next slide. So there are um, several soil options for containers. Um, some of the recommended um, options are commercial soilless mix for vegetables. You have the commercial potting soils and you can do a mixture of soilless and potting soil and compost. Um, there are different types of, um, actually, let's go to the next one. So not, not, not next slide, I'm sorry. So next, not recommended would be the 100% topsoil because it has no nutrients and it's very compacted. You don't wanna use commercial garden soil because it's actually made for outdoor use and it doesn't do well in a container. It actually can compact and not give your plant roots enough room um, to grow and enough oxygen. Um, bark mulch depletes nutrients from your plants. And you don't want to use 100% sand because there's no nutrients and um, it has very poor water retention. So um, for top soil, they're, like, they're definitely different from garden soil and potting soil. And um, they're often used as fill dirt around foundations. The garden soil, um, there are two kinds, commercial and from the ground in your yard. Never use either of them by themselves for container gardens. Um, garden soil holds water and can drown roots. And garden soil from um, or in ground sources can also hold diseases and weed seeds. Um, it can also be very heavy. And um, basically they're better for like raised gardens and in ground gardens. We can go to the next slide. So recommended soil options, you have 100% soilless mix or potting soil. Um, you can do 100% compost and um, the blends and mixtures are there. You might want to screenshot that. Um, the HG600, which is from our HDIC, um, some things do not recommend 100% compost. So we have a couple of different um, options out there. It depends on what you're growing. Um, some people have done 100% compost. It depends on what plant you're growing, but those mixtures of blends and mixtures are the best. Those are the best options there. Next slide. So um, we want to think about the plant and amend the soil based on the plant's needs. So um, let's see. sand is often used as an amendment to loosen compacted garden soil. But if you are using sand, just uh, make sure you're using um, you're not using that the play sand that's like in sandboxes. So examples of um, plants that need a little more um, of a loose soil will be carrots and parsnips, and a lot of herbs also provide um, amended soil. And let's see, next slide. So um, some of the things you wanna make sure you're checking for when you're looking at your soil is does the soil provide good aeration? Does it um, drain off excess water well? And does the soil contain needed nutrients? 
which we'll be going over um, the nutrient part soon. Next slide. So um, we've had questions about reusing container soil. Um, the best practice is to replace container soil annually. However, container soil may be reused if there are no disease or pest problems. Nutrients are replenished the next year. The soil has not become compacted. The soil is removed from containers at the end of the season. And saved soil is um, stored in plastic bags away from the elements. Um, so you will need to fertilize more frequently the second year because many of the nutrients um, will have been used by the plant or leached out during the first season. And organic media will weather over time, causing a decrease in the size of particles and pore space. And this may slow our water drainage and root growth. Um, so if it is not diseased, but is no longer good for containers, definitely dump the soil. Um, you can dump it in your garden in the woods, but some people do reuse their um, soil. So if it's in good shape, you can use it. Next slide. So um, choosing vegetables, um, you wanna consider space and location, the amount of light needed and necessary support. Some um, plants need more support than others like tomatoes, um, although there are some bush varieties. You also wanna make sure um, you're growing based on the size of containers you have available or that you have space for. Next slide. So most vegetables can be grown in containers. And even um, I've known people to grow corn in the containers. Um, they're huge containers and they have to have a lot of support, but it is possible. And I've known people to grow um, even uh, melons, watermelon and cantaloupe in containers. So it's definitely possible to do these things. Um, so you wanna match your container size to your plant growing needs. And um, there are bush and dwarf, dwarf varieties um, of different plants. So that's something that you might want to consider. And you can grow just about any vegetable or in popular easy container crops are salad greens, peppers, eggplants, tomatoes, beans, chard, beets, radish, squash, and cucumbers. And there are tomato and cucumber varieties that are bred for small space gardening. So you just want to make sure you're looking for the words um, bush or dwarf dwarf varieties, um, especially for your tomatoes, cucumbers, and squash. More challenging crops include melons, corn, potatoes, and sweet potatoes, but they can be done. Um, you do not want to squeeze large pots into small, or lar large plants into small containers um, because it can restrict your root growth and plants do not grow well. And you can plant from um, either seed or transplants, depending on your skill and the type of vegetables you're growing. Next slide. So here's some examples of um, plants that you can grow in a um, shallow depth container, about four to six inches. You can um, definitely do a lot of the salad greens, arugula, Asian greens, mustard, garlic as well. Um, you can do lettuce, spinach, radishes, strawberries, basil, cilantro, thyme, mint, marjoram, and um, some special varieties of carrots. You can also do chives and coriander. So you wanna consider the spread of the plant when you're looking at um, like shallow plants. Next slide. So um, these, this is a list of medium rooting plants. So about six to 12 inches in depth. You have your beans, um, especially bush beans are great. Um, beets, chard, carrots, cabbage, eggplant, you want your tomato dwarf and cucumber dwarf plants, squash, rosemary, parsley, onions, and peppers. You can also do okra um, and uh, some summer squashes do well as well, and dill and lemongrass. Um, next slide. So for um, Plants with deep roots, you want something that's a pot that's 12 inches or deeper, like a four or five gallon container. And you can do um, your melons, turnips, cabbage, tomatoes, cucumbers, beans, peas, squash, and broccoli, as well as cauliflower in those deep rooting pots. Next slide, please. So planting your vegetables, um, you definitely want to place um, container 
on drainage tray in selected location, cover your drainage holes with mesh, gravel, paper towel, or coffee filter to help prevent the soil from um, escaping the bottom. You want to thoroughly dampen soil before adding it to your container. Fill your container with soil within an inch of the rim and do not compact or press down the soil. Lightly water soil again to check drainage and moisture level and make sure you're following your seed packet directions. If you're using soilless mixes, particularly those containing peat moss, um, they can sometimes be difficult to water initially. Water tends to roll off the surface. So it is much easier to add water to a soilless mix after it is damp. And prior to planting, use a trowel or your hands to thoroughly water or work the water into the growing medium. Mulch can be applied as well um, after planting to reduce evaporation of water from the surface of the soil. And examples of mulch include straw, chopped leaves, and compost. Next slide, please. So um, remember if you're planting a tall plant, a vine or climbing plant, you need to provide support in or behind the containers. Tomatoes, peppers, eggplants, um, and plants like that all need staking or cages for support. There are many ways to stake plants. The simplest and cheapest is to use sturdy wooden stakes pointed at one end, and you can drive the stake into the soil when the ground is moist. Um, tie the growing plant to the stake as it grows and then using a thick twine or um, legs of nylon stockings, um, just don't tie it too tight. You can also use um, the wire mesh or small trellis for cucumbers and squash vines. They will grab onto the wires and um, you might need to help them get started by pushing the ends of the vines through the mesh, but that's definitely um, a great option. And then bush and dwarf varieties do tend to do better for the containers. Next slide, please. So um, planting in succession, um, I know we had a couple of questions about that as well. So um, you can grow um, three or even four seasons, um, pretty much depending on what you're growing, you can grow all year long, and especially if you're bringing your containers inside. If you're leaving them outside, it's definitely easier to do spring, summer, fall. Um, and it, there's a list, I'm not gonna go over everything on there, but you can definitely do a screenshot of that. So three season plant, is also known as succession planting. So when spring lettuce um, radishes are spent, you can replant the container in late May with pepper plants, beans, or cucumber seed. And then in the early fall, you can plant kale, lettuce, or broccoli to finish out the season. Just don't forget to fertilize. Um, after each crop, you can um, use your compost as well. Um, Let's see, so bush varieties um, do not need as much support. Some of them will need a little support, but not like the growing viney ones. So you can maybe put like just a couple of small stakes in and provide just a little support, but usually they do not need a lot of support. That's one of the benefits of them and that's why they're great for containers. Um, so cucumbers, whole beans, um, peppers and tomatoes, would definitely benefit from some type of vertical support, especially if they're not the bush varieties. Um, you can move your plants around the containers are portable to maximize sunlight um, for the heat loving crops and you can move them to shade for summer grown salad greens. So if you want to grow salad all summer, um, a lot of times you want to put it in a cooler location. Um, you can combine several different types of plants in one pot. It's best to match plants that have similar needs for water and fertilizer. So for example, rosemary um, likes hot and relatively dry containers. So that would not be a good match for something like cucumbers that loves, love a lot of water. So you wanna maximize space, um, you know, by you can trailing plants and with an upright plant. So some plants actually grow better when grown near a compatible companion. Um, and on the other hand, some plants don't grow as well. So some good companion plants are beans, carrots, and squash. Those three grow well together. You can do eggplant and beans together. Tomatoes, basils, and basil and onions grow well together. 
and do lettuce and herbs in the same pot. And spinach, chard, and onions also grow really well together. You want to avoid growing beans with onions and garlic. And you don't want to grow carrots with dill or fennel. Um, some plants you don't want to grow together because they compete for the same nutrients. So um, you want to just kind of be aware of that as well. You also don't want to grow tomatoes or squash with potatoes. And um, you don't want to grow onions with beans and peas. So those are the combinations to avoid. Next slide. So you want to look at proper watering for containers. You want to make sure you're keeping your root system moist. Schedule watering based on your container size, your temperature, the wind and sunlight, as well as the humidity levels. And you want to plan on watering daily during the summer months. Water root area um, of plants use using a soft stream of water. So just want to make sure your growing media um, is moist but not soggy. And um, add water slowly until you see it drain from the bottom, except for the self-watering types of um, containers. Do not use hot water. It can burn the leaves and young roots. And quality and yield will be reduced if allowed to wilt um, due to lack of water. So um, drought stress will kill the feeder roots and slow down the plant's growth. And smaller containers do tend to dry out a little faster um, than larger containers. So you definitely want to use a saucer to um, catch excess water to kind of help with that. And then large mature plants need more water than seedlings and young plants. You want to, um, if you can, find a way to automatically water that's good as well. Next, next slide, please. So um, a lot of times you'll see numbers on packages and um, each number represents something important for your plant. So the growing, okay, so um, you have the different vegetables need different, um, have different needs, your leafy greens, like um, fertilizer that's around 10, 10, 10. So the first number is the nitrogen and um, that's very important for our, um, just having great leafy greens. The next number is the phosphorus, and that's great for fruiting vegetables and roots. And then you have your um, third number, which is the potassium, rep represents potassium, and that's great for overall healthy growth. So um, this the NPK, and nitrogen is usually the limiting nutrient because it's highly soluble and is easily lost when, um, your watering just drains from the bottom. So that's usually the mineral that you um, might be concerned about most when um, growing in a container. Next slide. The feeding amount, um, the feeding, the amount and frequency varies depending on the type of soil you are using, um, the type of vegetable you're growing and the type of fertilizer you're using as well. So um, quick crops like leaf lettuce or broccoli um, mature in a, um, about 35 to 45 days might need to be fertilized several times. Long um, season crops like tomatoes, cucumbers, eggplant, and peppers may need to be lightly fertilized every two weeks or so. Next slide. So um, it's just general information about nutrient soluble fertilizers and liquid or powder have nutrients that are immediately available. You have liquid organic fertilizers like seed kelp, fish fertilizer and compost tea. You can use dry organic fertilizers like blood meal, composted chicken manure, um, cottonseed meal, alfalfa meal, and worm castings. There are also synthetic fertilizers out there and um, you can also use lime, wood ash, and um, gypsum. Next slide. So one of the cool things about um, container gardening is that there's little to no weeding. Next slide. Um, they tend to have fewer problems and they're great for annual plants. You also don't have to worry about, um, or usually don't have to worry too much about fungal growth. And common container um, vegetable plant problems we'll have there are insect problems that can be similar to in-ground, but it's usually less frequent. Lack of water, you can overwater, um, lack of nutrients and overcrowding. So there's um, the website again for more information on that. Next slide. 
tips for maximizing your harvest. You want to start vegetable plants indoor early in the spring. Move containers to maximize sunlight. Consider succession planting. Fertilize your crops and move plants indoors at the end of the season. Next slide. So here are a lot of the resources um, about building self-watering containers, um, container and small vegetable garden um, resources. And um, there's a YouTube link as well on container gardening. I also did a um, video on using straw bale for gardening. So that's something you can look up. It's um, on holistic wellness and health um, on YouTube as well. So screenshot this one. Um, next slide, please. Um, here are our links for the Grow It, Eat It program and the Home and Garden Information Center. Both, both of these um, will provide a lot of resources for you um, when you're doing your gardening, whether it's in the container or um, in your yard. So it's awesome resources and they're um, University of Maryland. So it's not just any extension, but it's University of Maryland's extension, which means that it'll be, um, the information in there will be uh, more applicable to our area and our region. There's also information for the Maryland Master Gardener Program. Next slide, please. Um, these are the fact sheets that you can find on um, the HDIC website. And there are information on amending your soil, um, container gardening, there are books there as well. Next slide. And some more websites for um, successful container gardening. Next slide. Supplies. Um, so Earthbox is great. Um, you can just look at all of those there to um, get an idea of the different supplies you can use. But you can definitely start with what you have. It's pretty easy um, to get started. Next slide. So if you have an abundance of growth, definitely consider um, sharing that with um, soup kitchens and food pantries so that they can have fresh produce in stock for um, clients that come in. And next slide. That is it for me. So thank you all so much for um, tuning in and I think it's time for questions. So I am done, Marcus. Thank you. You did an awesome job and like uh, we send it. All right, I think you all can hear me. Can everyone hear me and see me? Okay, so if anyone has any questions, I am here. Thank you, Cousin Rosita. Um, I am definitely here to answer um, any questions you all have about container gardening today. If you're um, in the Maryland area, it's a beautiful day, great day to get out and um, do some gardening. And uh, awesome, I'm glad I'm not talking to myself. Okay, <laughs> I just want to make sure y'all can hear me. Uh, yeah, it's a great. Um, time to just get out. Gardening is very therapeutic. It's great for your um, mental health. It's a great stress relief. There's actually bacteria that's in the soil that's been shown to help improve mood and just improve um, your outlook. And I think that's very important, um, especially now, um, just to be able, even if you don't garden, just get out and touch a tree. You know, put your feet in the grass and in the soil, take your shoes off, just be in nature um, as much as you can, even if you are in um, the inner city or in an urban area, you can find a tree and just, you know, touch the tree. Um, there's actually scientific proof of chemical um, reactions between us and trees when we touch them, as well as um, walking barefoot on the ground and on the grass. Like, um, it's called grounding. I um, talk about that sometimes in the Facebook group, um, Healthy Vibrant Life with holistic wellness and health. So actually this week in the group, we're focusing on um, journaling. So not everything's about food. Um, I focus on mind, body, and spirit. And I think right now we just need to make sure we're taking care of ourselves. Um, 
physically and mentally. I took off today from cooking um, because I have a physical injury, but also I think I just needed to take a break. Um, sometimes injuries can let you know the, the universe is saying chill out. And so I took that as a key to chill out and, but still provide information because that's what I have to do. <laughs> um, this is part of my, my mission, but um, like growing food is um, empowering and it's very important um, just for self care and um, self-determination, being able to grow your own food just has like a whole positive outlook on your mind. Like you can take care of yourself. Um, and if you get some neighbors together and you all, you know, like I grow tomatoes, you grow cucumbers, so let's grow something else you all can share. Um, usually when, even in small containers, um, like I've seen people grow peppers in small containers and have an abundance. And so you can grow a lot in a small container um, earlier, I was talking about the bush varieties as well as dwarf. Um, the bush, like you can buy tomato plants that are, um, instead of growing like long, tall vines, which you can also do in a container, um, you can actually do them in a container in bush style. So, <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to give that a try. Um, I have not done tomatoes at home, I've done them on the farm. So, I um, have a tomato plant that I'm going to put. I was trying to decide whether I want to keep it in a container or not. I haven't decided quite yet, um, but I'm going to get out there and get my hands in some soil um, before it gets dark. And I encourage all of you all to do the same, whether it's in the studio apartment and a basement, um, wherever you can. Um, I did not talk about grow lights in that presentation, but if you are growing inside like food and things, you can get a grow light that will help um, you grow in very dark conditions. So there's always um, a way um, to do these things and definitely a resource for you. And we had someone ask a question about gardening in the, the uh, Facebook group. So I'm there for all of it. So feel free to um, you know, ask questions there because um, that is a resource um, for all of us. So um, let me see what Oh, good questions, yay. Uh, what is a good beginner vegetable? So herbs are awesome to start with. Um, they grow like weeds and in some cases, um, people treat them like weeds because they, be, they can take over. So um, mint, once you, like a lot of people do it in a container because if you put it in the ground, it will take over. I did that on purpose in my front yard because um, I do have mint growing and it went from a small little tiny plant to taking over a six foot by six foot space. Um, we had squirrels eating up my kale, they were eating up everything. So that was my natural method of trying to deter them from eating up all my produce. I don't mind sharing, but don't eat it all. Um, so that was just, um, so that's an easy one. Basil's great to do in a container. For uh, actual like produce type things, strawberries are great in the container. Um, let's see. Oh, radishes. Oh my goodness. Like you can plant radishes today and in three weeks you will have radishes ready to eat, especially since it's warmer. So I did a video um, over a month ago um, and I did radishes and it took a long time to grow, but that's because it was still cold and I didn't bring them in. They were still in the porch. So, but they did grow and it just took a little longer. But now if you were to start today, you can have radishes ready to eat from seed to ready to eat in about three weeks, three weeks to sometimes, um, 30 days. Yeah. So that's so easy one. That's the one I like to do with kids because they get to see the results quickly. Um, what else? That is... Lettuces are very easy as well. Um, so that's something that's fun and it doesn't take long for that to grow either. And you can easily do that in a container. So yeah, those are good beginner vegetables. Um, yes, Candace, yes, the earth, like we need to take care of her because she takes care of us. Um, you know, the, the universe has provided everything we need. And so we need to um, definitely like, use those resources um, and not necessarily have to turn to other methods um, because just being out in nature is so helpful and so beneficial. 
um, for us. So just take your shoes off, you know, put your feet in the soil, put your feet in the grass, put your hands in the soil, um, breathe in, you know, breathe in all of that life. It's, it changes you, it changes you for the better. Yeah. Um, what are the good, easy start foods for somebody that's completely new to this? Okay, yes. So I spoke about radishes, um, lettuce, strawberries, definitely, and pretty much all or most of the um, herbs. So rosemary is good as well. Rosemary and lavender doesn't need a lot of attention once you get it planted. Um, it can handle droughts. It can handle um, severe weather conditions. And because they're like evergreens, they you can have them all year long in this zone. So we are in um, Central Maryland. So our USDA zone is 7A and 7B, um, specifically in the Baltimore area. So you wanna see what your USDA zone is um, that'll help you determine when it's best to grow certain plants. So um, those slides at the end has some resources um, for you to be able to see those, um, see that information. So um, if you're like in north, northeast, it's still kind of chilly up there, but like you can do lettuce up there. Um, this is a great time to still get some kale in the ground and some other things. Some people don't like to grow kale during the summertime. I like kale all year. So um, there, there, it's up to you though. Like, um, yeah, those are good, easy ones. Radishes, super easy. You can eat the greens, you can eat the bottom, you can eat it all, love it. I did a video actually on making pesto with the radish greens. Um, and um, I did some sauteed radishes and my parents loved them. Um, they were kind of like uh, potatoes. So super good. And Katrina says, thank you, thank you. Thank you all for um, sticking with me today and um, joining a different format for do doing this. Um, I don't have outdoor space anymore, but what's good for strictly indoors? Strictly indoors. So I um, do have like a front area, but in my house, I don't have a lot of sun. So I guess it depends on if you have access to sunlight and windows or all shade. Um, so I'll give you the, if you have sunlight um, and not like a whole lot of, like you have to grow strictly indoors. Basil is great. Um, let's see. You can do lettuce inside. If you have like a window seal, that would be good too. If you're in a very just like kind of a place where you don't get a lot of sunlight, if you don't have a grow light, which would be an awesome option, if you don't have that, um, you can grow potatoes. People have grown potatoes indoors. Uh, I have not tried that. I'm, I'm thinking about trying that though. I'm just like, see what happens in a five gallon container. But um, I've been told that potatoes do well um, in this situation. Yeah. Carrots need some sunlight. Um, so if you were to do that indoors, a grow light would be good or a window seal. So if you have, uh, if you can only grow inside and um, you have a limited space, as long as you have sunlight, you can still like at least two to four hours. Most plants like about four hours of sunlight, but you can get away with two for some of them. Um, it's, it's definitely worth trying and see what happens um, for that. But I'm sorry, what else did you say? Yeah, um, herbs though. Herbs are really good and easy. Do you have any other questions? Okay, so I will be actually on, um, oh cool, you're growing potatoes, nice. Um, they also take a little longer than some other produce, but it's definitely worth doing. Um, and you just, you can start with just a couple of little, um, slips and have an abundance of potatoes. It's amazing. Um, yeah, so I will be, I have the wrong link up right now. I apologize for that. That's for the meal plan challenge, which you can sign up for the mailing list. So I'll be running that again in the fall, but, uh, Right now we have the plant-based um, Made Easy program starting. So let me just take you down. I'll show you this. This is my um, 
So make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. I have cooking videos and a couple of garden, gardening videos on there, and I'll be adding more. Um, so definitely um, do that and follow me on Instagram as well at Holistic Wellness and Health. So let me go in and put in, I'm going to put in the comments where you can register for the um, plant-based made easy program that's sponsored by the Black Vegetarian Society of Maryland. So I'm going to put the link in the comment section for us. And actually, I'll put it on the banner as well. We will be starting our kickoff on um, this Saturday at 6 p.m. Oops, click the wrong one. There we go. So, yeah, you can enroll at learn.holistic-wellnessandhealth.com, vegan-made-easy-opt-in, or opt-in. Um, it's a free program. It's go, it runs for 10 days. We'll have cooking classes and cooking demos, as well as workshops um, throughout the 10 days. There'll be prizes avoided, uh, um, awarded to people who participate. Um, and you can participate by attending um, the workshops live, and sharing and making comments um, for the presentation as well. When you do that, it helps other people see the video and our goal is to get this out to as many people as possible. So um, make sure you are active you know, throughout the program. We'll be running it in the Holistic, um, I'm sorry, in Healthy Vibrant Life group, Facebook group. Um, the workshops will be on our Facebook pages for Black Vegetarian Society of Maryland and Holistic Wellness and Health. Um, and we will be sharing it also on the YouTube channel. So if you have someone who's like, I am not on Facebook, but I want to participate, we will have an opportunity for them to watch everything um, on YouTube. So we're trying to make this accessible to as many people as possible. Everyone should know that it is very easy to um, have a plant-based lifestyle. So it doesn't have to be complicated, doesn't have to be expensive. And yes, it can be very delicious. So we will um, be doing that. Thank you all so much for sticking with me today. I know this has been a longer presentation than what I've been doing. Um, we'll be back next Sunday, Live at Five, where I will be doing, um, we'll be making um, some dishes from our guide, our 10-day plant-based made easy guide. So there are recipes throughout the guide, and I will be doing that live next week, um, God willing. So everyone, have a beautiful day. Breathe, relax, um, you know, just meditate. If you need to get out in nature, do what you need to do to take care of your mental health, as well as your spiritual health, as well as your physical health. All are connected and all are important. I love you all. Thank you so much for watching and staying with me. And I will see you all later. Peace, love, and blessings.